What is up, fellow YouTubers? So, guess who got a P.O. box? This guy. Yeah. I got me a P.O. box. So, I can use that for my wand business. And so, fans can send me care packages. No, it ain't. I ain't thirty just yet. It'll be thirty in March, which is coming up. Word. Well, happy birthday to Handini S. That's what's up. Yeah. Big shout outs because when I was getting my P.O. box, I had a fan stop me. They were like, hey, man, have you seen this this thing? And they showed me this fake thing that one of my you-know-whats did. And I said, no, that's bullshit, dude. He's like, I know it is, man. Just want to say I support you on, ch on your channel. He comes in, goes to the store, comes back out with and not your father's root beer. It's a Ben and Jerry's ice cream, and he's like, hey, man, go, when you go home, make yourself a float and say, fuck the trolls, right? That's what I'm saying. So a big thank you to the fan who bought me some Not Your Fathers and a little bit of the Ben and Jerry's chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream to go with it. Appreciate that. <sighs> mm. We're going to lay down some vocal tracks. We're going to lay down some vocal tracks for the, uh, we're going to lay down some vocal tracks for the new album. Excuse me. Hey, it's a Friday. I got my P.O. box set up. The P.O. box from this video forward will now always be in my description box. So if you want to send me cool care packages, you know, it's the same address. I'll be, it's the same P.O. box address I'll be using when I ship and mail off the wands. Yep. So big ups to the fan who bought me some goodies. You know, and I get different people all the time who walk around when I walk around town and stuff, they'll hit me up and be like are you King Cobra JFS? And I says, yes. They're like, dude, love your your content. So basically the fan who bought me this root beer and this ice cream was like, dude, fuck your trolls. Keep doing your thing. And I'm like, word, appreciate that. Yeah, of 
got you. Okay. You've got your true fans and your haters. Oh, look at that. Garage Band immediately decides it doesn't want to work. Okay. We're going to reopen the song and see if that helps. I'll be getting their limb layers done. Let's get the vocal layers done. The song will be done. And then I might, YouTube might send it off after four or do four more. We'll see. band is not wanting to work typical the highlight button stuck on lovely all right so i'll be making wands or oh, i am making wands i should say um, the P.O. Box is there, baby. I got a P.O. Box set up. Go ahead and paste it right there. So if you want to send fan mail, you can. There it is. But um, while working on music,
The Bachelor is back. Stream it live on ABC with YouTube TV. In Wyoming, we love our wide open spaces, and there's never been a better time to appreciate them. Knowing that COVID. Dean, and so cancel culture is in. Ugh, here we go. Elena Akana published a video February 24th, 2021. Why we can't accept cancel culture. Infiltrating everywhere. And it doesn't even. The way of me making change. In this cancel is to culture. Be as judgmental as possible. Cancel culture in a nutshell. Right, cancel culture actually. Careful culture. Freedom of speech. Also cancel culture. Let's talk about cancel culture. I'm going to assume you know that cancel culture is a form of a boycott involving an individual, usually a celebrity, who is deemed to have had problematic behavior or who has said something questionable and controversial. There have been countless videos and numerous takes on why cancel culture itself has become problematic. The way that we judge an entire flawed, growing human being by one moment in time, taken out of that time's social context, thanks to social media and the internet. Ironically enough, cancel culture's origins apparently come from a misogynistic joke. Possibly the first reference to canceling someone comes with the 1991 film New Jack City, in which Wesley Snipes plays a gangster named Nino Brown. In one scene, after his girlfriend breaks down because of all the violence he's causing, he dumps her by saying, cancel that bitch, I'll buy another one. Jump to 2010 when Lil Wayne referenced the film in a line from his song, I'm single. Yeah, I'm single, had to cancel that bitch like Nino. This callback to the earlier sexist cancel joke probably helped the phrase percolate for a while. And then, several decades later, gained massive popularity in 2018 and 2019, as evidenced by this Google Trends data. Now, one second. Dealing with assholes. Yeah, like a little scared baby back bitch. No caller ID. Unknown number. everything with those mongoid fish. <laughs> Delete. Look, I got the phone in my hand right now. Go ahead, call me. I'll roast your ass on channel right now. Pussies. Hello? Yeah, yeah Coach. What's what? the, what's the zip code for your P.O. box? You never gave it out. It's it's eight two six zero one. Thank you. The whole chat was asking for it. Please don't roast me. All right, dude, you're good. All right, ladies. Yes, the the PO box for my zip code is eight two six zero one. Should have included that. No, look at that. Airplane mode is on. <sighs> I put airplane mode on, so why the fuck is it still calling with a no caller ID? It shouldn't be calling at all, man. God, my trolls are desperate. Hello? Hi, it's Josh. Hey, what's up? Hey, is this the real sexy goth bad boy? There it is. Oh my god. Can't believe I got you on the phone. Um, could you maybe like sing a line from the new album for me live? I would love to hear it. Um, I'm sure we can work on something like that, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, well, what you up to right now? I'm uh, live streaming right now. Oh, you're on live stream? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, it's a really a shame that you're such an intel. Yeah, it's a shame you're a fat, fake cunt. You see that shit? You see that shit? It's You see that shit right there? And you know what I'm saying? Some fun pretending to be a fangirl? Fuck that cunt. 
Fuck that cunt. No, man, they're really blowing up the farm right now. All right, airplane mode is on. What the fuck? Stay on. Enable it. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? This is the kind of crap they do. Let, let's hire a hot-sounding chick to pretend to be one of his biggest fangirls just to insult him. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that cunt. Back to uh, what this is. Why we can't accept cancel culture. Well, YouTube, there were two sides to this argument. Dude, if I was a if, if I was the things that that chick accused me of being, would I give a fuck about gender equality? Hmm? No, I wouldn't. People, the I word that she called me, People like that don't give a fuck about gender equality, man. That's the kind of crap they do. Trolls will take the things that I hate and then use it against me because they're bored, sad, shallow fucks. We're jealous of that the fans do stuff for me. Like occasionally buy me beer. It's ridiculous. And speaking of the fans buying me beer, one second. You don't even know, YouTube. I got mad respect for women. But at the same time, respect is a two-way street. You know? And I'm sorry, but when women are doing certain behaviors that re rectify certain words, I want to call it. And the answer is simply gender equality. If men were behaving in a certain way, mind you, If men were behaving in a certain way, women would not be afraid to call it out. You know what I'm saying? It's obvious that chick had a clit hard on for me. Otherwise, she wouldn't be so obsessed with me. Or better yet, it was probably a troll using a fucking voice alternator type thing. You know? And uh, these toilets are not going to let me stop me from making videos. You see that? Instead of calling them trolls, we're going to call them toilets because they talk so much shit. Ah, oh, geez. Well, who am I to argue, man? When... The, the good work that I'm doing on YouTube, people come up to me out of the, off the streets. They're like walking around, doing their thing, and they buy me a beer. They're like, hey, it's Friday, Cobra. What are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, they're walking around doing my thing. Dude, can I buy you some beer? I'm like, you don't have to do that, man. I want to, man. I, just, I think you're so awesome. I love your videos. Well, thanks, man. I mean, shit, if you want to get me a video, I mean, blah. If you want to, if you like the videos and you want to get me a beer, mm hmm. Like, I'll be right back. So they got me, like, literally a couple bottles of this stuff and then a couple of pints. They're like, do you need the syrup to go with it? And I'm like, nope. I got some at home, man. This has happened to me a couple times before, and honestly, I'm grateful for the fans that I make here in town and all over the world. You don't have to buy me anything. Of course, there are certain canceled people. Hey, before we get into that, though, Yes, 
like I'm not going to argue with people, man. On that respect, you're a fan of the channel and you want to buy me alcohol, you see me walking around town, fucking A. And honestly, it's pretty sad what these toilets won't do for a laugh. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that layering. I want to watch this cancel culture video that they're talking about. Jeez. So big up to the fan who bought this. Appreciate it. Oh, probably had a yuck. Ah, uh, nope. Ah. Uh. fork fell on my desk and I picked it up and I got the hair from there. Ugh, gross. who absolutely deserve to be stripped of their power and made to pay the consequences of their actions. 
Now, here's the thing about YouTube. When we use cancel culture for good, uh, excuse me, and we're not abusing the system just because we don't like somebody, and then cancel culture when it's used for good is awesome. If you're a serial rapist, abuser, convicted pedophile, <clears throat> murderer, or <clears throat> someone who likes fucking cantaloupe, then you deserve to be canceled. And more importantly, probably serve jail time. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Exactly. Because if you actually enjoy cantaloupe, you should not be free to walk the streets. And there's something incredibly wrong with you. What I do want to add to the cancel culture conversation are three things. One, how cancel culture is weaponized against others. Yeah. That is true. What's number two? Two, how we weaponize cancel culture for ourselves. And yeah. three, how we can actually fix this monster that we have created. Weaponizing the weaponization of cancel culture against others. Weaponization against individuals. Though cancel culture began with good intentions and undeniably has brought some predators to light, we're now witnessing the intentional weaponization of cancel culture against others. Some people use this to their own advantage, hurling accusations in order to get revenge for personal matters. If you're not familiar with the Tati Westbrook and James Charles drama, Westbrook insists her video calling James Charles out, a video that used language to insinuate that he was a sexual predator, was because Westbrook thought this was the only way to get Charles the help he needed, and not because she was upset that he promoted vitamins that weren't hers. You can watch the hours of videos if you want, though dissect this topic to all hell, but I can tell you, it was about the vitamins. This weaponization of cancel culture is not exclusive to individual against individual. The Bachelor is back. Stream it live on ABC with YouTube TV. I just wanted to show you the USCCA's free concealed carry reciprocity and gun laws map. Super individual. Fandoms rally against properties they aren't satisfied with, most notably the Sonic the Hedgehog film. Now, when the trailer came out in April of 2019, it was heavily roasted online and had a nearly 50% dislike ratio. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, he looks horrifying. The reaction of the... Honestly, I didn't think I didn't see the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie. I could have cared less. I don't watch movies very often unless it, the preview catches my eye and I'm like, that looks good. I'd watch it. But the original Sonic the Hedgehog live action character made a lot of people uncomfortable. I don't know. It was not wrong here. I mean, he had a human freaking teeth for crying out loud. He's a creepy boy. But the it wasn't that creepy, to be honest. Twitter outrage mob on Sonic was, according to The Hollywood Reporter, so immediate and loud that Paramount pushed the release date and had the VFX team redesign Sonic with an appearance that matched the Sega games. It's hard to argue that this weaponization and power of the internet of fandom was necessarily wrong. Because when you compare the two well, designs, <laughs> one is... Well, I mean... Okay, so you're using cancel culture because you're unhappy with the way Sonic looked in the live-action movie. You know, not that big of a fucking deal. But people are so fucking triggered anymore that that's what it's become with our society. And now because a bunch of people said, well... And to be fair, if you want people to watch it, you're going to listen to them. So if the mass majority says, hey, this hedgehog sonic person you have looks creepy as shit. Nope. Clearly way less creepy. I think we can all agree that the redesign is cuter and more approachable and feels nah. less like a creature. And it makes us feel safe in our safe spaces. The, the new sonic that they put for it is much more cute and approachable, and oh my god, uh, microaggression. Who eats and enjoys cantaloupe. But nonetheless, this is still weaponization. 
And in this case, things came seemingly all out for the better, given that it set the record for the biggest opening weekend for a video game film in the United States and Canada, hauling an estimated 57 million. $57 million. Sonic ultimately ended up grossing over $319 million worldwide. Wow. So the Sonic movie grossed $319 million worldwide. God damn, dude. That's a lot of cheddar. And speaking of cheddar, if you'd like to donate to the channel... Using the PayPal is greatly appreciated. Monetization is turned off. So what do you do? Make wands and make music. Exactly. Which I'll be continuing to do after this little video response. And even with the redesign, the budget was about $95 million, So this entire debacle had a happy ending. But I would argue that it sets a pretty dangerous precedent. I mean, how much of a say should audiences have over creative choices? Ah, uh, yeah, that's the question, YouTube, that's the question. How much creative say should the audience have over the creator's choices? Case in point, I get a bunch of people who are pissed off because I'm watching Terrence Pop or Sidney Watson or what have you. People will sit there and go, oh my God, is he doing another video response to those people? Uh, I'm like, if you're a fan of me in general, you're going to like pretty much all of the work I post. I feel like when you sit there and text me dumb shit like, why the fuck are you watching this? I'm like, why the fuck do you care? If you like my other content, you'll ignore the, the ones where I talk about certain things, you know? How many times have we seen movies canceled based on their trailers? Which, by the way, most filmmakers have no control over the way that their movie is marketed. Usually, it's at the discretion of the film distributor. And we all know how misleading trailers can be in order to get us to watch the movie. And though the Sonic incident turned out well, we've seen outrage mobs in other contexts, particularly academics. And these mobs have often succeeded in silencing professors, philosophers, and journalists. Take the case of Rebecca Tuval, who in 2017 published an article addressing the question of transracialism, which was relevant at the time because of the news coverage of Rachel Dolezal. Oh, uh, here we go. That's a whole ball argument we're going to have to open up on camera. Transracialism should not be a thing. If you want to be transgender, cool. More power to you, man. You want to cut your dick off and your balls out? take it out and turn it into a fucking vagina, go for it. You want to turn your vagina into a fake penis that gets hard when you push a button or however it works, I don't honestly care or want to know, then, hey, that's your choice. But people who are calling transgenderism a mental disorder, no. No. No, 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 no. There's so many arguments you could have to this. I don't think being transgender for people is a mental disorder. I think it is a personal choice. Okay, they choose. They're born with it slash they choose it. But they can't choose the people who harass them. You know what I'm saying? And I've gotten bullied for being my autistic goth self. And, um, you know, so I kind of sympathize with them a little bit, man. You know how much hate I get for being my heterosexual goth self? Drives them nuts. They can't stand it. You're like, straight men should not be wearing makeup or nail polish. It doesn't conform with society's rules. And I'm like... However, we have to draw the line somewhere with creeps like Jessica Euler, Euler, whatever her fucking name is, and people advocating for minors to get transgender surgery, but most of them grow out of it within like four or five months. 
I mean, there's a whole list of bullshit with this that we've already talked about and discussed. How people are trying to advocate for puberty blockers. And which is why if you're going to support transgenders, they have to be 18 or older and already have gone through puberty as the gender they were assigned. Because that's just science. There are so many health complications to not letting kids go through puberty as the gender they are. You know, it just produces less health consequences that way. Although on top of it, you see a bunch of men who have become women. They've reaped the rewards of being a strong, muscular male. And all of a sudden... They chop their dick off and get some fake tits and they're calling themselves a chick because, you know, they're not whatever the reason. Right. And now they're being allowed to perform in women's sports where they dominate the competition. Keep in mind that women are simply not allowed to join men's sports, period. Women have to fight for that shit to join men's sports. So I think for a lot of cis women, it would be kind of frustrating to see a man dominate and one more thing wouldn't it oh geez and i'm not here to pick on trans people believe me i got mad respect for y'all but here's the thing of it we have to have reason and logic and if science says that giving minors transgender surgery before they've had a chance to hit puberty as their own gender is seriously detrimental to their health can cause a whole shit ton of problems psychological issues, etc. Then we need to, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it is something they are born with. They can't help it. It's something they choose to because they're born with it. You know what I'm saying? And people get offended when I use terms like it or them or they. Well, with the fucking pronouns anymore, what the fuck is supposed to call them? There are people out there who get so goddamn triggered by pronouns, it's ridiculous. This person identifies as an attack helicopter, but you call them a person and they're super pissed off about it now. They identified as a sparkly female purple dragon who sometimes identifies as male, and you're just sitting there going... Man, I do not want to be the hot mess in that head. Holy shit. So if anything, all they want is for people to try and understand and be sympathetic. And you know what I'm saying? For one second, could you imagine going through what they're going through right now? Just seriously, for one second. Could you imagine being confused about your gender and have society ridicule you for it? You would hate it. You would fucking hate it. Forget the harassment I go through, right? Like you want to you want to cut your dick off, get some fake tits and then get cosmetic surgery to realign your ears to, to be more pointy so you could be a female elf. Hey, you got the money for it and as long as you're not being super creepy about it, who cares? Okay. Jessica Euler is a poor example of this, but this is what I'm talking about, dude. People like her will give the transgender community a bad name. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm like, I don't care. If you're trans, I'll support it. Hey, heck, you want to you want to call yourself a chick, even though your DNA structure was never gonna change. From the gender you're born. So you're a skateboarder, huh? Yeah, I got the skateboard right here. Can, can you do any tricks? Well, no, I'm still learning how to be a skateboarder, but I'm a skateboarder, damn it. I got the tricks. <laughs> I mean, the skateboard. Jeez. Oh, 
I honestly feel sorry for trans people. They have to go through so much crap in our society. And on top of that, the fucking bullshit that goes on in their crazy fucked up head. Anybody who says that part of it's not somewhat of a mental disorder is full of shit. To some degree, it is a bit of a mental disorder. And they can sit there and say that we're the ones with the mental disorder because we identify as the gender we're born. So that kind of goes both ways, dude. But understanding and compassion, that's what these people need. And they, they, they need understanding, a little bit of sympathy, and some compassion. Could you begin to imagine what it's like? Most of us who are cis, whatever gender we're born, we're comfortable with it. We know it. We accept it. It's just instinct. You know what I'm saying? But for a lot of these people, shit, YouTube. And then this is where transgender gets a bad name because you see these fucking crazy assholes who are saying they're trans disabled or transracial. And I'm like, ah, geez. A white woman who claimed black identity in the paper in defense of transracialism. Duval examined the arguments used to defend a transgender identity and apply. Oh my God. Rebecca Tuval. Volume 32, Issue 2, Spring of 2017, pages 263 to 278. Okay. Published online by Cambridge University, <coughs> January 1st, 2020. Former NAACP chapter head Rachel Dal Dalazel's attempt attempted transition from the white to, to the black race, associated heated controversy. Her story gained notoriety at the same time that Caitlyn Jenner graced the cover of Vanity Fair, signaling a growing acceptance of transgender identity. Yet criticisms of Dalazal for misrepresenting, misrepresenting her birth race identicate a widespread social perspective precipitation that is neither possible nor acceptable to change one's race in the way it might be to change one's gender. Considerations that support transgenderism seem to apply equally to trans, trans or racialism, although Dalazal herself may or may not re represent a genuine case of the transracial person, her story and the public reaction is to serve helpful illustrative purposes. Okay, you want to call me a transracial phobe? Go ahead, but if doing blackface and acting like you're black is considered inappropriate, especially if you're whiter than Casper's white ass, then how the fuck is transracialism accepted? You start examining other forms of trans. You got trans disabled. There are people out there who are cutting their fucking arm off because they just think, eh, it doesn't belong there. Just like I have a story to tell. Well, how'd you lose your arm? Oh, you cut it off because you're trans disabled. Well, right. And you got to think of how many people have lost their arms to really freak accidents who went to war and had it blown off by a grenade just to have some pretentious fucking asshole go, oh, uh, I don't think it belongs there. <laughs> and then you got to think about how insensitive this is for black people who had to face oppression from white people for 500 plus goddamn years just to have some goddamn cracker inject themselves with melatonin and go, hey, y'all look at me.
tied these to the question of transracialism. This is a very common technique among philosophers, testing if reasoning used on one issue would apply equally to a different issue that appeared a close parallel. The negative social media response. Why are we even having a conversation about this? If blackface is inappropriate, if blackface is super inappropriate, then transracialism should be equally as inappropriate. We have to draw the line at transgender, trans species. Just draw the line right there. Anything else outside of that? Nope. Response to Tavelle's article, huge. An open letter with 500 signatures, which apparently was mostly signed by non-academics, was sent to the publication demanding that the article be retracted. And it was an unprecedented move. Now, now, the now we're using cancel culture to support racism. That's what it sounds like to me. Like here's someone doing the ultimate form of blackface. Oh, but if you call it what it is, you're a transphobe. Well, think about this for the second, for just one second. You're a white person trying to be black. That's basically what it is. And black folks got a word for that. It's called irritating. Demic community itself largely supported Tuvel, pointing out- Pointing out that Nuka Zeus is the worst example of this. If you don't know who Nuka Zeus is, well, consider yourself lucky because uh, <laughs> that Sydney Watson video I watched was just like, wow, we've reached a pinnacle of insanity. Now, how several statements in the open letter were false and misleading and did not reflect the actual content of Tubell's paper. The Intelligencer has a great breakdown of Tubell's paper that debunks most of the assertions in the open letter, and I'll link it if you want to read it. Tubell herself went on the record to say that she had written the article from a place of support for those with non-normative identities because she saw transphobic logic lay at the heart of the attacks against Dolezal. Now, I'm not here to comment on who is right or who is wrong because I'm not an academic or a transgender person or a transracial person. Yeah, okay. This is where the journey for equality is blurred greatly. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this this whole pronouns bullshit. I'm not trying to be offensive when I call them an it or them, or they, because some of them, even though they've accepted that they're trans, some of them still want to be preferred to be called them or they, because there's two people inside those heads, man. Yikes. Person. My only thought on the entire controversy of this is that if people found fault with it, they should have addressed it critically, with critical thought. The level of outrage and personal attacks that Tuval faced was not warranted for an academic article rooted in philosophical thought and examination. Because examination, if it's politically incorrect to do blackface, it should be politically incorrect to do transracialism. Why are we even having a conversation about this? This is what philosophy is for, to examine why we think the things we think and bring different viewpoints to the discussion or debate. Look, the culture we live in is moving at such a rapid speed. What is socially acceptable or not changes incredibly quickly. The norms around gender and identity are in flux. And philosophy, you know, they've got a lot to examine right now. And if we find fault with one of those assertions, we should make sure to note the context is within academic speculation and address it accordingly. Without threatening someone's life or family or employment, when they're doing the very thing that they're employed to do. Now, if Tuval's article was like a hate piece that attempted to invalidate trans identity and was laden with obscenities, like that's a different story, but it wasn't. 
And I'm very curious how many people who signed that open letter, one, actually read Tubell's article and not just the provocative headline, and two, have the academic background to even understand why the explorative article was written as a parallel to transracial identity and the conclusions. Breakfast that's ready in a snap. Lunches you actually look forward to. It made. Weaponizing it for ourselves. Now, the weaponization of cancel culture against a myriad of others seems like a no-brainer. But the second, and I think more harmful effect, is that we weaponize it for ourselves. We weaponize cancel culture so that we feel better about ourselves. Because feeling angry and feeling superior and feeling outraged feels fucking great. Well, feeling superior, outraged, and angered... Well, I'll tell you what, when I'm outraged and angered, I don't feel so good about it. Heck, the thing I'm angry about, I want it to stop. But feeling superior, like you're fighting for the right causes, yeah, that's a good feeling. But I do get a sense sometimes now among certain young people, and this is accelerated by social media, there is this sense sometimes of the way of me making change is to be as judgmental as possible about other people. And that's enough. Like if I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right or use the word wrong verb, or then I can sit back and feel pretty good about myself. Cause man, you see how woke I was? I called you out. Yeah, yeah that's about the truth of it. Yeah, this obsessive urge to be the victim and to be woke. That's the problem with our society, YouTube. Okay. It's this obsession to be woke and to be the victim. And when someone misidentified or said the wrong thing, you call out their shit and you can sit back and scratch yourself on the nuts and give yourself a nice pat on the back and say, hey, look at me, I'm a woke tard. <laughs> Calling someone out makes us feel real good. It automatically places us above the person who did wrong. The problem does not have to do it. Nope. The idea that, oh, you called someone out on their bullshit. Oh, wow. That automatically makes you better than someone else. Piss off. Uh. Just because you called someone out doesn't mean you're right. They could be right for all you know, and you're the one that needs check your facts the problem is we forget that we do wrong shit all the time this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're always politically woke and all that stuff I, you should get over that quickly the world the world is messy there are ambiguities people who do really good stuff have flaws there's a wonderful book. Uh, it's called So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. And it examines the Twitter outrage mob and the real life effects that this digital judge, jury, and executioner have had. Some of my favorite standout quotes are, the snowflake never needs to feel responsible for the avalanche. Yep. That is the goddamn truth. The snowflake never needs to feel responsible for the avalanche. Let's break that down, shall we? You got these overly sensitive, woke tart snowflake motherfuckers who are so comfortable in their own goddamn safe space. If anyone doesn't think like them, ho ho, they're an idiot and a retard. And you get a bunch of them together who think the same way. And they see someone else who's a decent guy. And they think to themselves, oh, hey, I want to fuck with this person. Because they go against what I preach. You know, and then they never stop and think, well, how would it feel if people were trying to cancel culture me? I wouldn't like it. Especially if you were a decent person just making videos on the internet. Like, fuck.
And we were creating a world where the smartest way to survive is to be bland. Yeah, the, we're, and we're creating a world where the smartest way to survive is to be bland. To be... Uh, nope, don't be bold and speak out against the issues. Don't do that. Nope. If someone says you have to accept trans, period, no matter what it is, otherwise you're a transphobe. Yeah, but what about the science that says that kids should wait till they're 18 before they get trans realignment surgery? No, fuck all that. If you speak out against it, puberty blockers and all that horrible shit, you're a transphobe. It's like, dude, there was literal science backing this up. Like, I don't give a fuck if you're trans, dude. Seriously, if you want to be trans and you're 18 or older and uh, you have the money to realign your body into whatever you want it to be, hey, man, good on you. Or, excuse me, ma'am, would be the more appropriate pronoun. You know, like... You ever talk to these people and go, what's it like up on that twisted, fucked up head of yours? You ever stop and try to analyze and socially construct your own ideas based off of someone else's experience? That's called free thinking. You try it sometime, you'd be amazed. Cancel culture in its most extreme form often forgets that, yeah, we judge an entire person based on one moment in time out of context of actually knowing that individual's background, exposure, upbringing, and growth. And if cancel culture's goal is to make people more aware of their harmful behaviors, yeah, it's succeeding. But if its ultimate goal is for those harmful behaviors to be adjusted so that people can move forward in their lives and integrate that awareness and get rid of that problematic behavior, then it's fucking failing. Wait, what was that? That people can move forward in their lives. Goal is to make people more aware of their harmful behaviors. Yeah, it's succeeding. Yeah, if the, I guess what she's saying is if cancel culture, if the cancel culture is being used to... Uh, make people aware of their shitty behaviors and bring awareness to these topics. It's doing a good job. But if its ultimate goal is for those harmful behaviors to be adjusted so that people can move forward in their lives and integrate that awareness and get rid of that problematic behavior, then it's fucking failing. Yeah. But if it's being used to uh, change those behaviors so that uh, people can integrate into the system more smoothly and adjust their thinking so it's more progressive, then yes, you're right. It's failing miserably. Cancel culture has become much like the Me Too culture in the sense of, oh, it's a movement. It's the newest thing. Have you heard? Oh, what's this cancel culture? Oh, it's just like the Me Too movement. What? It's a movement created by younger millennials and Generation Z. Yeah. Oh, we. And just like any movement, you're going to have the whiny extremist assholes on either side. When the Me Too movement's being used to help people identify with other people and go, hey, that shit can happen to us too, kind of thing, fine. But when the Me Too movement is being used as this whiny, pretentious platform, to victim shame everybody and then make yourself feel like crap because you're not a oppressed. Well, they get a parade and I don't. Then you're using it for the wrong reasons. Jesus Christ. Cancel culture, the Me Too movement. I feel sorry for kids in today's fucking society. I really do. All these stupid ideologies. It's exhausting. I think Sarah Silverman put it the most eloquently on an episode of her podcast. Christian Picciolini, my friend, who was a neo-Nazi for years, since he was from 14 to, you know, into his 20s, late 20s maybe, was the head of a, a neo-Nazi, whatever KKK chapter where he lived. He has spent the last 30 years getting people out of hate groups. That's what he does. 
but he went towards love. He was 14. He was smoking a joint and an older kid took the joint out of his hand and threw it out and said, you don't need that stuff, man. And gave him a place where he was accepted and cared for and loved. And that was a hate group, a neo-Nazi group where he found family and camaraderie and a place to be when both of his parents worked all day. In this cancel culture, and we all know what I'm talking about, whether you think there is one or there isn't one or where you stand on it, and there's a lot of gray matter there. But without a path to redemption, when you take someone, you found a tweet they wrote seven years ago or a thing that they said, and you expose it and you say, this person should be no more, banish them forever. They're going to find some place where they are accepted. If we don't give these people a path to redemption, then they're going to go where they are accepted, which is the motherfucking dark side. I think there should be some kind of path. Do we want people to be changed or do we want them to stay the same, to freeze in a moment we found on the internet from 12 years ago? And so we can point to ourselves as right and them as wrong. It's righteousness porn. I don't know about you, but I'm very tired of this circle jerk of righteousness. I want people who don't want Exactly. Should people be allowed to change and better themselves? Absolutely. And this is the problem with cancel culture. This is the problem with cancel culture. Is you see a tweet that someone wrote 12 years ago. Or even two days ago. Or four days ago. Whatever. Four years ago, and you're outraged. Well, this person's a horrible piece of shit. Fuck them. You want to cancel them, but then you don't want to give them a chance to redempt themselves for redemption. I actually agree with Sarah Silverman 100% on that shit, man. It's ridiculous. Because it might get to a point where, like Sarah Silverman said, she had a friend who was a white supremacist dickhead since he was 14. And then out of nowhere, when he got out of that shit, you know what he said? That he's going to spend his time helping other people get out of hate groups. like cantaloupe to have a way back to love not banishment and irredeemability and moral superiority if we don't exactly if you don't have a if you don't have a way for people to redeem themselves seriously fucking hate I seriously fucking hate this shit dude Like, you, you can't expect people to learn, you know what I'm saying? If we've all made that one offensive twit or tweet, whatever you want to call it, we've all posted something gross, weird, and offensive on social media before. And, um, well... If, if we're not allowed to redeem ourselves as to be better people, then society is never going to grow as a whole, is it? So, like, you know, maybe someone made a racist tweet seven or eight years ago, but maybe in the seven years that they've been alive, on, like, the very same day they made that tweet seven years ago, they came, they came to this big realization that uh, 
racism sucks and uh, what am I doing with my life kind of thing. And then maybe they have that moment of clarity where they're just like, hey, fuck sexism, fuck racism, power to the people. What I preach. But going back to the whole trans thing, if people are allowed to be uncomfortable with it. Like, if that makes you uncomfortable, that's your choice. If you're against it, that's your choice. However, you don't have the right to persecute other people just because they don't think like you. That's the difference. Ridiculous, YouTube have a space for white supremacists to go when they denounce the KKK? How do we ever expect them to leave? If we don't have a path for misogynists to Exactly! Okay, if you want people to denounce horrific shit like the stupid KKK, then um, if you don't give them a place to redeem themselves, then don't expect them to change. Because if they're not, if they're not giving a chance, if they're not given a chance to redeem themselves as people, in that instance, then they're going to stay the same. They're, they're, they're going to go where they're accepted, and that's just that's just how it is. Fuck the KKK. Avada Kedavra, bitch. program and be reintegrated into society, how can we expect them to change? If we don't have room for people to make mistakes, learn from them, and then do better, what the hell do we think cancel culture is actually promoting? Exactly. Just the idea. Uh, exactly. My point. If cancel culture is promoting nothing more than just this get off power of look at me and a bunch of people. One second. Yes, sir, man. Thanks. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going. Okay. Why? Just one of my. I'm having a good day with my fans. I guess I had a fan buy me some alcohol earlier. Now I got a fan who. Order me some grub. Not sure what I got, but thank you for that. Again, could you please, like I'm sincerely asking, please stop sending me food, okay? I got people who will take care of me on this, okay? But I appreciate that y'all care about me like this. We got a oh look at that we got a burger with some veggies and some loaded fries. I wanted to um, load this burger up with some of our bacon or our fries.
This burger's got peanut butter on it. Huh. Give it a burger for later. I'm not sure what restaurant it's from, but it's decent. What do we got in here? Looks like some kind of cheese sauce. Yeah, that's cheese sauce, is it? Mm-hmm. Should I use that for the nachos? I'm gonna pour this on my burger. And eat it for later. All right. One second. Sorry about that, dude. Like, so stop that. Happening. 
I'm trying. I appreciate you, bro. All right. Have a good day. Good day. This is why YouTube, okay? Please, I appreciate that you guys sending me food, but please quit sending me food. All right, I've asked you nicely. All right, that's bullshit. When they go to call the number back, it's it goes to a no fucking goddamn fucking ridiculous dude. All right, it's bullshit. I've asked you nicely. Like I don't eat seriously. And if you're going to sit there and order the food, at least fucking give them a number to call back on. It's bullshit. Like, this is ridiculous, dude. Like, I'm done with this crap, dude. I've asked you nicely several times, like, please quit sending me food, okay? I got people who will send it to me. I got people who will get me food. I don't need people doing this crap. Like... On the real note.